mga lola at lolo, mga misis ng tahanan, at kayo din ang mga binata at dalaga. Alas dos na naman ng hapon, oras na sa inyong paboritong programa, ang Kuro Kuro. Ngayong hapon ay meron tayong espesyal na panauhin na kagagaling-galing lamang sa Bansang Amerika upang makipagkwentuhan sa atin sa, tungkol sa kanyang mga naging karanasan sa Bansang ito. Ating ding malalaman ang mga kakaibahan sa kultura at tradisyon nitong bansang kanyang binisita. Aking mga kaibigan, ating anyayahan ng masaya ang magandang si Jane Maestro Shear. Hoy Jane, kamusta? Mabuti. Ang ganda ng damit mo ha. Galing sa atin eh. Ganun ba? Oo. Tell me Jane, you've spent the last year as an exchange student in America. What are your impressions about the people there? Are they nice and friendly like Filipinos? Extremely friendly, in fact. Everybody that you meet in the street says, Hi, how are you? Have a nice day and all this. But there's one thing wrong about this extreme friendliness. It's very superficial. Nobody really wants to know how you are when they ask you a question. It's very different from what we have here in the Philippines. If you know somebody and you ask them how they are, mm -hmm. you at least give them two minutes of your time so they can answer you back. It's almost like you might as well be a post and they say hi how are you and it's like talking to the wind you know? so everything's just plastic then very fakey in fact fakey that's what i felt anyway hmm. um let's see you know most of our viewers are young people you know from school going to school here in the philippines i was wondering how americans go about dating interesting topic dating it's very surprising how much mm -hmm. freedom there is in the United States and in the university campus most of the students live in dorms away from their parents and so they can do whatever they want when they go out on dates it's so different from what we have here in the Philippines you know we have chaperones to make sure that that young people behave when they're together mm -hmm. or else uh, they have friends with them so the parents make sure that at least their daughters virtues are not at stake when they go out with a young man okay uh, what do kids normally do though when they when they go on dates is it just the normal going to movies and going to dinner and stuff like that or yeah, same as here they go to a movie they go to dinner they go dancing mm -hmm. the difference is the kind of relating they that they have it's very usual to find public intimacy in public you, know, you see really? them kissing, hugging, making out, and, mm. and that's just normal for them, right? It's very normal. Well, you know, parents aren't there. They're not chaperoned. They don't have anybody to tell them, look, you shouldn't be doing this. Well, where are their parents in first place? They live far away from the campuses where the, where the young people are studying. So yeah. students are really on their own, right? Yes, very much so. I see. Mm. Okay, don't they have a curfew like us Filipinos? Cause I know that our parents would want us to be home like a certain time, like 11 o'clock. Oh, um, not on campuses, I don't think. They even have, I think they even have things like co-ed dorms. I can understand co-ed schools, yeah. but co-ed dorms. Some people date, mm -hmm. but they go home to the same place, you know. And what kind of hanky-panky do you think goes on in, in co-ed dorms? I mean, the same building. Men and women living in the same building. So, okay. and if they like each other, who knows? So, it's, it's so, it's, it's not surprising, therefore, that you have a very high incidence of teenage pregnancies in the United States, higher than what we have here. So, mm -hmm. you can see how the system, it seems, lends itself to daughters just falling on the wayside. wayside. But going back to this dating and going back to the fact that the parents leave their children to be on their own, mm -hmm. now I really think that, that that implies a certain degree of irresponsibility on the parents' part, don't you think? I when think so, because I don't think Filipino parents would allow their kids to, you know, to, go, to get away of, from their houses and stuff like that. Especially at this particular age, mm -hmm. when they really need a lot of guidance yet. Yeah. and then you just let them go on their own. Mm -hmm. you know, a, lot of, a lot of teenagers, a lot of young people still need, still need to, to have their parents around to tell them that this is what you should be doing mm -hmm. and this is what you ought to do and so forth. And, and this is absolutely, this is not there. I just didn't see it there. Okay, 
in the universities, what are the differences between single students and married couples? Uh, I've been invited to American homes mm -hmm. for dinner, you know, for a little socializing and all that. And let's talk about maybe the husbands and wives. Maybe some of our audience would yeah, be interested okay. in that. Pinky, I don't think you'd want to be the wife of an American. Really? It's a very difficult job. Why it's not? It's almost like being treated like a maid. They do everything while the husbands just stay home mm -hmm. and sit, sit, with the in, sit in the living room watching TV. The wife does all of the household chores all by herself, takes care of the children, work outside of the home. Oh my God. She's expected <laughs> to bring in extra income and so forth, and no help at all from her Well, husband. don't they get extra help from some, some other place or some other people? Well, we have maids here. Yeah. You know, our Filipino men are the same way. You know, they mm -hmm. don't do anything in the home. But at least the wives have maids to take care or to help with household chores and so mm -hmm. forth. So I think that this shows a higher sense of insensitivity on the part of American husbands that seeing their wives not having any help whatsoever, they don't pitch in. Maybe that's the way they've been brought up. I mean, is it because it's a tradition or something? or? Well, I think males probably, in a sense, are very much alike everywhere else, except that <laughs> in, the, in the United States, uh, they, could, they could really be doing something to help out, but they don't, or mm -hmm. they refuse to, or they think they're too good for that kind of a job. I don't okay. know. Okay. Do American families normally have big, you know, families, or is it really big like the Filipinos here, or? We have our average family size is maybe six or seven children, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the normal way. And it's nice to have a large family. Everybody's happy and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. In the United States, they have one to two children at the most. At the most? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, well, you can understand part of it, but um, see, the American housewife and the American husband usually has would have jobs outside of the home. Yeah. So even before the kids can walk, they're already brought to daycare centers where somebody else takes, takes care of them. Mm -hmm. And the quality of, of interaction, the quality of child rearing is, is, very very, is done in a very short period of time. Yeah. And also, children, the United States is a very lonely place to be a child in. What do you mean, very lonely? Not in very what many. Sense? Not very many people have children. You go in the place where I lived, for example. Ve there were very few couples that had kids, mm -hmm. and so you have children that just stay, that have to entertain themselves. If they if they have playmates, they have playmates in in this special places where the ch where the parents take them to to just stay there while they're doing their jobs. If you want to hear something really shocking. Wow. This really shocked me. Okay. I found, I met, um, I met young couples when I was there mm -hmm. who were just newly married, and they told me that they didn't want to have children, that they would, they, they would not even consider having kids. I mean, when you think of, when you think of the young married couples that we have here, mm -hmm. You don't go into marriage without thinking of having a family, right? Yeah, because yeah, well, why did, why get married in the first place? Yeah, that's if you're right. Not going to have children, and the reason for not wanting children are terrible. They don't want to spend the time. You know, they think children are um, a hassle. That's an American idiomatic. Well, expression. that's a wrong. You know, that's the wrong way of thinking in the yeah. first place. Mm -hmm. Children are very inconvenient things to have around. Mm -hmm. So you know what they do. They say they would rather have dogs or cats. That so they value animals than mm -hmm. human they'd beings. They'd rather have animals in their homes. Well, that's really strange. Than Jane. children, than human beings. And you can see this in, in their TV uh, advertisements. I was so shocked to find that very few advertisements, I hardly saw any uh, advertisements on like baby food. But you will find a lot of advertisements on cat food, dog food, and really? how your cat or your dog will feel so good eating this sort <laughs> of food and so forth. And so that just tells you how important these animals are to their lives. Okay, Jane, a while ago you said, said that uh, grandparents live away from their 
family. Don't they see their grandchildren or something like that? Where are they now? <laughs> you know? It seems like it all falls into a pattern. I've tried so hard to try to figure out the American culture, mm -hmm. okay? And I tried to make sense of it. But remember we were talking about how parents leave their children yeah. in, in some places mm -hmm. while they go to work and then when they become teenagers and young people are left on their own, they're sent to campuses, That's right. able to fend for mm -hmm. themselves and so forth. So in a sense you can see parents not really giving as much attention and, and as much care to their children. To start out with. And you don't want to be an old person in America because the same thing that they did to their children, the children do to their parents. It's they put happening. them away. They put them away in places like nursing homes. Okay, Jane, what do you mean by nursing homes? These are the places where old people are supposed to be given care mm -hmm. um, because their children don't want to care for them anymore. And for me, the only way I can see it is it's a place to die. Won't that bother their conscience, though? I don't know. Um, I can't think of anything more cruel. When you, th when you think of our parents here and how they've given us a lot of love and care, the, only, the least possible thing that you can do for them is to care for them when they're old. Mm -hmm. But Americans don't seem to feel the need to do that for it's their parents. There. Maybe it's just giving them back what their parents gave them while yeah. they were growing up. I it's would the only thing. So. It's the only way I can make any sense out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jane. Palagay mo ba? Babalik ka pa sa Amerika o titigil ka na lang dito? Ay, naku, huwag na. Talaga? Masarap lang bumisita, pero ayokong tumira ron. Masyadong mahirap ang buhay. So, hindi mo i-advise sa mga kabataan na pumunta ron? The dialogue that you've just seen is an example of ethnocentrism, that is, the judgment of another society or group in terms of how it measures up to the standards of your own culture. Now, obviously, ethnocentrism can lead to faulty conclusions about other cultures. Perhaps these misunderstandings are more easily seen in others viewing our own culture. But it's very difficult to remove ethnocentrism when we evaluate a culture different from our own. While ethnocentrism may produce a feeling of pride and solidarity within a society, in the modern world we have immensely important and frequent contact with other cultures, and understanding cultural diversity is more crucial than ever before. One of the goals of sociology is to offer an alternative to the ethnocentric perspective, and we call that alternative cultural relativity. That is the understanding that you cannot judge one culture from the perspectives of another, or with the standards of another. Each culture represents an adjustment to a unique set of circumstances. And so as you continue to evaluate cross-cultural behavior in today's world, try to avoid the biases of ethnocentrism. <laughs>